Hey everybody, back again. Hope you had a good week so far. Um, Thursday, I'm excited to, to chat with you today, to converse, talk about some things. You know, Monday was very good. Um, Monday was, you know, kind of a hard thing. Monday was, you know, face-to-face, uncomfortable, and I, whatever you want to say. Depending on what side of the fence you're on, you know, but it's things we got to talk about. So I want to continue that conversation today, all right, because it's important. The climate we're in today, um, it's important for us to to talk, to dialogue. I heard, I heard someone say, we, we want to go from hearing to healing, okay? From hearing as we hear, as we hear, as we hear each other talk, as we hear each other share our hearts, as we, as we hear each other share our experiences. And I'm talking about across racial boundaries where um, white America is listening to the cry of black America, okay? Where black America is listening to uh, white America sharing um, their thoughts and, and what we can do to move forward. We want to go from hearing to healing, okay? So that's what these are designed for, is again, to be educational, inspirational, but also again, you know, challenging, okay? Because without a challenge, there could be no change, all right? Without a challenge, there could be no change. Things will stay the way they are. So on Monday, I talked about, I talked about one particular area in which we need to see change okay that was a criminal justice system okay i share with you some information some statistics um, that are factual because i want to deal with facts that talks about the mass incarceration of young black males okay so today i want to go into two more areas okay before i do that let me say this and this is speaking to and i realize you know we have a, a lot of different viewers who are watching um you know, a lot of different ethnic groups, people that represent different ethnic groups. So I'm speaking to a broad audience here. And that's good, I'm speaking to a broad audience, I like that. But let me, I wanna speak directly to our, to the black American culture, um, African Americans. Um, one area that we have to do better in, and this is before I get to the other things as far as systematic, systematically changing so that we can get here. So we all can breathe together, we all can eat, okay? We have to do better when it comes to our homes, okay? The home, a lot of our inner city urban families um, have dysfunctional homes. And and I, I've been there. Again, the organization I'm a part of, I see it firsthand. And we got to do better because the fatherlessness really cripples our young people, okay? without the father's mouth. So we can, there's things we need to see in society as a whole to help, okay? To, to help and to level the playing field for us. But one thing we can do on our end, okay? One thing we can't control on our end is we gotta do better when it comes to the family, okay? Father, if there's fathers watching now, all the fathers who are watching, be there for your son and daughter, okay? This is important. I have a son myself, you know, um, legacy starts at home. You know, I'm big on legacy, okay? This is legacy leadership, okay? Um, that's what I'm about. But my legacy started at home with my son. And now my son is following in my footsteps and he's going to college to play college basketball this fall. All right? Um, smart, young man, intelligent, respectful. So I wouldn't tell you to do something I haven't done myself. But fathers, you got to be there for your son or daughter, especially when they're young. All right, African American community, African American community, father, fatherlessness is huge. Okay, so let's be better. I want to start. Let's be better because if we were present, if fathers were present, then some things wouldn't take place on the streets. Okay, a lot of young men are turning to the street life because they have no mentor, and mentors are important. So they're turning to their mentors are the drug dealers. Okay, their mentors is becoming the music they listen to. All right, so um, let's do better. All right, so I want to get to the other two systematic things that we need to see change in society in order for us to get here. 
so we can breathe together because we're not here yet, okay? We're not at this, this particular juncture, but this is the goal, all right? So the second one is the educational system, okay? The educational system, and again, I say system, needs a lot of work in the African-American community. And this is from a 2019 publication. Here's a quote from the article. Public school, public school pupils enrolled in urban districts receive on average around $2,100 less per pupil than their suburban counterparts and $4,000 less than students who attend rural remote schools. Okay? So the funding for the urban school districts is much less per student. All right? And what does lack of funding mean? Okay? And we probably know off the top of your head, but, but I want to look at documentation and facts, okay? What does low, what does lack of funding mean? Number one, lower salaries for teachers, okay? Lower salaries for teachers. Number two, less resources, okay? I've worked in the inner city um, school district for four years, okay? I was a teacher in the inner city school at a high school, all right? There were classes that didn't have textbooks. Not the beginning of the year, first couple weeks, okay, yeah, we're waiting for the textbooks to come in. They didn't have textbooks for the entire school year. So this isn't something I'm sharing because I heard it or I read it online. I've taught in an urban school district, but I've also taught in the suburbs as well. And there's a huge difference when it comes to funding, okay, when it comes to resources. They're not there, okay? So because of that, they don't even have textbooks in certain classes. So they're already behind. All right, thirdly, and this is huge too, the condition of the buildings. <laughs> the, the, the aesthetics and, and the way things look, the hallways, the classrooms, it's, it's, you can't, it doesn't even compare to, the, to schools in the suburbs. All right, so a young African-American um, daughter, a young African-American female or male walks into a school and you see the walls are dirty. There's no posters up. There's nothing uplifting. You know, um, there's, there's uh, bookcases shoved in the hallway. They have no textbooks. When you walk into an environment like that, see, your environment, your environment affects your um, motivation. Your environment affects your, um, your aptitude to want to learn. Those things are important to a child. And so when those things are lacking, again, this is a system. This is systematic. This is across the board. So we got to do better. We got to get more funding. And I know tax dollars, you know, in certain districts, you know, in certain communities, tax, tax dollars contribute to. But what if the taxes are so much lower um, from the start with? So let me read this. Cuts to education spending affect all aspects of students' academic experience. Cuts to education spending affect all aspects of students' academic experience. So we're talking about an experience. So these, they walk into the schools and, I mean, I'm gonna be honest, it's, it's kind of depressing. And, but we gotta do better. The education system and the African, African American communities has got to change. We need more funding, okay? So the first was I shared on money, criminal justice system, okay? Reform to this one. I just shared educational system. The third one is our neighborhood systems, okay? And this is where it starts at, our neighborhood systems. The, the living arrangements where our young men and women are growing up, okay? Um, let me read this to you. Now, this is very profound. Because we have, you know, inner city America, the urban, the urban neighborhood. We have the projects, what is known today as the PJs, the projects, okay? They just didn't pop up. It wasn't like all of a sudden. Um, and there's other ethnic groups that live there too. Asians, Latinos, you know, it's a lot of pe people of color in the inner city neighborhoods, okay? That just didn't start yesterday. This has been going on for decades, okay? And I'm going to read something to you. This is from uh, Richard Rothstein. He's a uh, research associate 
and he's an author as well. He wrote a book, okay, and I've been reading some, some of his excerpts, and this is what he said. The current state of the American city is a direct result of unconstitutional, state-sanctioned racial discrimination. I'll read it again. You know, I like to read stuff over again, because <laughs> the first time you might not get it. You know, I'm like that. I like to hear something second, third time. Plus, some of you might be recording stuff, right? Write these things down. The current state of the American city, okay, is the direct result of unconstitutional, state-sanctioned racial discrimination. Then he goes on to say, African Americans were forced to live in apartments and not be homeowners. People, this has been going on for decades, okay? Decades. Years ago, African Americans were zoned off and they had to, they, they put them in these apartments. They weren't allowed to buy houses and some of them had the money to do so, okay? Do your research. Again, I share a lot of things. I'm not just sharing because it feels good. I'm emotional. No, these are facts. African Americans were not allowed to buy they were not allowed to buy houses, homes like white Americans were, okay? They were, they were zoned off in a certain zone, and that zone was the apartments in which they could never own, okay? Okay, but the whites had these houses, and they were homeowners. African Americans were not allowed to do that. So, this is how this all started, okay? This is from racial segregation, when it comes to housing, was 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 from the federal govern, government, okay? So the landlords and the banks set this system up so that blacks could not prosper, okay? So hence, that's what we have today. The inner cities, and it's a perpetuation, okay? Systematic, this is what's happening. So these young, you know, we have, again, the Three Star Foundation, we work with these inner city youth, and I have young men who, you know, they didn't have food on the table last night. He didn't eat dinner, okay? Um, mom is working two jobs. She gets off at midnight. So when he gets home from school, he takes care of his two siblings, okay? He's 14. He's 15. He has a brother or sister who's eight, nine years old. He's taking care of them. He needs to be taking care of himself. Mom is at, is at work. She gets off at midnight. Dad is locked up. This again, father's got to do better, okay? Get to my point. Dad is locked up. Now, this kid goes from home to these, from these projects, okay? Mom gets home at 12. He goes to school the next morning, and what does he see? Look at the school. We just talked about the educational system. This is what he sees, okay? So, this is systematic, and we have to do better if we want to see better. You know, the definition of insanity is, and I'm sure you guys heard this before, doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results, okay? Again, if enough of us have the right information, okay, if enough of us are exposed to the right information, okay, no matter what ethnic background you are, no matter what race you are, and I believe there's enough of us who want to see change, who want to see better. I know I have a lot of um, white friends, okay, my circle. I'm, I'm close friends with a lot of white people, okay? A lot of them want to see better, okay? I have some calling. We talk on the phone. We, we, you know, we have conversation. We have Zoom meetings. Blacks, whites, no matter the color, Asians. But if, if enough of us can get the right information and we have enough of us in positions of leadership, okay, those who push the pen and who control the dollars, we can see change. And I believe... We're headed in that direction. Um, so thanks again for tuning in. You know, again, I know this is uncomfortable, um, but we got to be made uncomfortable sometime. So, all right, like my page, share this with your friends, you know, um, encourage them to hop on, you know, my podcast each week. And you guys have a great weekend. All right, like my page and don't forget my book too. All right, I haven't promoted my book lately. Don't forget my book, um, the transition series. All right, I'm sure it's popping up on the screen now somewhere. <laughs> uh, so you guys take care. Always remember, somebody's depending on you, all right? So you got to be great. See you next time.
Perfect.